Good afternoon, good evening, uh, whatever time it is, wherever you are. This is Mr. Mitzel. This is your asynchronous lesson for Friday, March 5th. Let's get right into it. You'll see here um, on Friday that you have two items. Uh, one of them is a the prompt of the day, just like we did yesterday. Um, you're watching this video uh, and um, I'm going to walk you through yesterday's as a model for today's. Remember, yesterday was our practice, so we worked together. Uh, today, you're on your own. So you're going to be expected to create the same thing we created yesterday, just with the new information uh, that's being presented in this prompt. We'll take a look at that. The second thing that you'll need to do is finish up your essay, the Unit 5 essay that you started uh, on Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday, a lot of students asked, hey, uh, am I going to get time to finish this? Yes, today. So your do now, your engage, your prompt of the day, that should take you about 10 minutes, um, you know, thinking through and, and following the steps. Um, you're certainly welcome to watch this video for the review and the model. And then you're going to work on your essay, uh, get it all wrapped up so that you're ready to conference. If you haven't started yet, um, please use the skills that you picked up in the prompt of the day. Use those that same process. That's why I'm teaching it to you. Use that same process for your unit five essay. If you haven't started, if you have started and you realize that your thesis does not match the prompt or your topic sentences don't match your thesis, then rewrite them so that we're good and covered on that. All right. The last thing, if you didn't get to the evaluate. This is only three questions. Um, it is a graded assignment. This is from yesterday, Thursday. Um, you are more than welcome to play the Kahoot if you want to. Uh, you're more than welcome to jump into the no red ink practice if you want to. But this right here, if you haven't finished it, it needs to be finished up. Um, like I said, it's only three questions, uh, but they are SOL practice questions. So please do those as well today. I didn't move them up into today's module because um, it's better to just leave it here under the date it was assigned. All right, let's get right into it. Click on engage prompt of the day. Uh, you leave this video running in a new tab and um, let's get started. Once you've clicked on the uh, assignment, you're going to get the box that says, you know, click on the document below and you'll have your name. Of course, on mine, I have everyone's name. Once it loads, uh, I'll have everyone's name on here and uh, you're just going to pick, you're just going to choose yours. All right. Once you've clicked on it, here is our prompt. Uh, this is our, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. I clicked on the wrong one and brought the wrong prompt up. Now, this is the prompt that you'll be working with today. Uh, if you don't need any guidance, uh, you're ready to go. You're ready to show me that you can write your thesis, that you can do your mini brainstorm, that you can develop your topic sentences. Um, the remainder of this video will be that tutorial. And then at the end, I'm just gonna remind you of the work that I've already told you about. All right, this is your assignment for today. I'm now going to switch over to yesterday's uh, as a model and review. So if you forgot the things that I was thinking or the things that I was talking about yesterday, continue watching this video. Be sure you submit and uh, be sure you submit in order to get credit, not just for the assignment, but also for attendance. All right, I switched over to yesterday's prompt to model the process. Remember that you do have to turn in yesterday's prompt. It was our practice, um, but your grade is going to be from today's, the one about Duke Ellington. So the information that I'm inputting will not work with today's prompt. Again, this is just a model of the process. Um, you're going to follow each step and I'll pause, uh, I'll pause and let you know when I'm moving on to the next thing. So if you're working on your Duke Ellington prompt, the one that's due today, uh, if you're working on it, you'll be able to you know, pause this video and then go apply the concept. And if you have to rewind the video to kind of hear how I generated the idea or hear how I answered the question, um, and then also the things that I'm doing, like the little quirks and, and tweaks along the way, um, you know, please do that. Please pause the video, please rewind the video. All right, let's jump right in. Our instructions, whenever we get a prompt, so when you're sitting and doing the direct writing short paper of the SOL, when you have to write an essay for the, the second day of your test, um, you need to read the prompt. Then you're going to have to go through this process on your own. These questions won't be here. So if we're practicing 
Now, um, when you get to the test, you will, you'll prompt yourself, you'll work through yourself. Here's the prompt from yesterday. Ancient, the ancient Greek storyteller Aesop said, no act of kindness, no matter how small, is ever wasted. Explain how small acts of kindness can have an impact on others. Use specific details and examples in your response. Now I've read it and I understand what it's saying. Now I have to answer this question or rather finish this sentence. I am being asked to, well, I'm being asked to write, but that's not the word that they gave me in the prompt. Your job right now is to look at your Duke Ellington prompt and decide. What kind of essay is this? And then find, locate the actionable word. That means the word that you can take action on. What are you being told to do? You're being told to explain in this prompt. Take a look at the Duke Ellington. Pause this if you need to. All right, so I've highlighted explain. That's my actionable word. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to type explain. Now, I'm using the highlighter so it, it stands out to you. All right, there it is. Explain in blue so that you'll see uh, that you'll see where I got that from. Okay, what am I being asked to explain? Well, I'm being asked to explain how small acts of kindness can have an impact on others. And I'm going to highlight that in this green color. Now, I'm going to just copy and paste. You're more than welcome to do the same. Okay, the next thing I have to do is I have to tell what I need to include. Folks, this is going to be the same for just about every single one of those 40 uh, Virginia State prompts. We always need to use, there's another action word, or include, specific details and examples. Now, what that means is, is going to be part of a, a future lesson or another review lesson. I'll make this one purple. Okay, copy it paste it in. All right. Now, we are going to talk about, you know, in the future, what specific details and examples means. Um, but suffice it to say for right now, if you're just saying, well, yeah, what does that mean, Mr. Mitzel? Um, specific details and examples are, did you get an example from a text that you read? Did you, um, did, did you have a personal experience that you could give as an anecdotal example. Anecdotal means like, you know, it's based on your own experience or your own observation. Okay. So, so now that I know what I have to write about, I know I have to explain how small acts of kindness can have an impact on others. I'm going to constantly come back to this green highlighter, right? If I'm not staying on that topic, that's what I'm going to base my thesis off of. That's what I'm going to um, base my topic sentences off of. Okay. In fact, without even brainstorming, I know this is kind of like a shortcut, um, without even brainstorming, I can form the stem of my thesis and my topic sentences. I can. I don't even have to have thought of any ideas yet, and I can already build my thesis. I can already build the very foundation, not the whole thesis, but the foundation of the thesis and the foundation of the topic sentences right here. Small acts of kindness can have an impact on others. And I'm going to copy that. Look, I'm coming down here and that'll be the beginning of my, that'll be the beginning of my thesis. Now, I don't know how many topic sentences I'm going to have. So I'll put it in three times, like I'm going to have three topic sentences. Now, folks, remember that a topic sentence is the first sentence in the body paragraph. So if you have three topic sentences, you will have to write three body paragraphs. Well, Mr. Mitzel, what if I only have one topic sentence? I'm sorry, you can't. <laughs> You've got to have two points. You do automatically, um, not just for the state, but you need to have provided two sort of aspects or two dimensions. Um, we say that because otherwise your writing is flat and literally one dimensional. 
You know, if you say um, the Lamborghini uh, is the best uh, make of car because I love it. Well, that's not very compelling. That's not adding any dimension to it. But maybe you were to say, and if that was your opinion, uh, that Lamborghini is the best uh, make of car because it uh, has the, the best performance. There's one. It has the best uh, track record in, in as far as like having to be repaired. And it's my absolute favorite um, because of the way it looks. Okay, now I have three different dimensions to my writing. So when we say you have to have multiple body paragraphs, it's so that your writing isn't flat and just, you know, very basic, but instead you're looking at it from different angles or different, rather different characteristics of the, of the topic. So now let's go back in and let's do our brainstorm. So yes, I've given you the, the basis here, the basic part, um, but what we need to do right now is we need to like build this out. We have to create some reasons. We have to com complete some ideas uh, that I'm going to talk about in the body paragraph. So how do small acts of kindness have an impact on others? Well, the first thing that uh, our, st our students in class thought of is it uh, makes a person feel cared about. Okay, another reason that they came up with um, when someone is kind to someone else, uh, they may pay it forward. Ultimately making, you know, the, the community better because, you know, one person is kind to someone, that person is kind to someone else in another way, and it builds the community. So I might even put in there, uh, builds community. Okay. Another reason that I'm thinking about how does how do small acts of kindness have a benefit on other or how do they benefit others? Um, it might free up someone's time. Uh, and the example that I was thinking of, like doing the dishes. So if it's, you know, in, in my house, Mrs. Mitzel typically does the dishes after dinner while I'm playing with Ben or Ben and I are, you know, cleaning up his room or something. But often, just in my experience, there's an anecdotal example. Um, Mrs. Mitzel is very busy all the time. And she, if I ask her, what could I do to help out? She would always say, without a doubt, oh, you could do the dishes. That would be so, or unload the dishwasher. That would be so helpful. Now that frees up her time, that small act that small risk taking on that responsibility for, um, you know, for someone else uh, can free up her time to do something. Maybe she'll get extra time to relax or maybe she'll be able to take a break that she needs. So I'm just thinking about my future planning. Now, what's the first thing that you notice about my reasons as I'm typing them in? They are not sentences. They're not sentences. All right. Another idea. Uh, maybe being kind to someone or thinking of someone uh, could help them perform better. Now, remember, your, your brainstorm doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I'm thinking of like sports or maybe in a talent show. Uh, if, if you've been in the position where someone has said, oh, uh, I, I'll, come to your, I'll come to your recital, I'll come to your game. Um, and then they didn't show up, you may have felt disappointed. And think about, did, did you perform at your top level? Maybe or maybe not. Um, but think of it the other way. Maybe you weren't expecting someone to come or you did ask them, uh, not necessarily expecting for them to come. And then they, they arrive and you're like, oh man, I can do this now. Like you're really, you know, you're really um, encouraged by that. So maybe encouragement or perform it, performing better. So now I've come up with my ideas. Um, let me also demonstrate this. Let's say we just said uh, feel happy, right? Like that could be, that is a result. Um, and then we also said it could make a person's day. Now I wanna show you in your brainstorm, please write down everything you think of. But now that you've brainstormed a number of ideas, you need to sort them. Now, pay it forward. I, I really like this idea. I think I'm going to use this one. Um, a student came up with that. So I'm going to highlight that in yellow. That's important. 
uh, that's important for me to use. Um, the freeing up the time, I like that one. I, I think that's different than pay it forward. So did you see what I just did? I compared my reasons, making sure that they were unique and different approaches, that they are different angles. Now, if I said it makes the person um, feel cared about, I do like that. I think I'm going to use that one. But um, make them feel happy. Now, being feel like cared about and feeling happy, mm, those those are different feelings. Like I feel cared for. I could feel happy riding a roller coaster, but the roller coaster doesn't care about me, right? I don't feel cared for by the coaster. These these ideas though are really really tied to how the person feels and they're too close. So ultimately I'm going to move feel happy up here because those are the same. I'm going to call them the same idea makes a person's day like, Oh man, that made my day. I'm also going to move that up here because really what am I saying when I say, Oh, it makes their day made them feel happy. Okay. So I'm going to evaluate my ideas. Now, I, I could say, like, I could do the perform better one, but I don't really have a great example other than what I shared with you. I think that these are my three best answers. Makes a person feel cared about. I can totally think of an example for that. Like, th think of any movie, like any movie where there was an apprentice who, you know, like got taken in uh, to in trained by someone else, right? Makes the person feel cared about the, per, you know, when someone is kind to someone else, think about any hero that saves the day um, that, and that example should work, right? So like, make sure you have an example lined up. If you're like, oh yeah, it makes them feel cared about, or maybe in your own life, your own experience, you were going through um, a tough time. You know, I'm thinking back to the time when I was in high school and high school is tough for some people. Um, and I really, you know, I really needed, I needed somebody to come alongside me and, you know, mentor me. And uh, I did have someone do that. Uh, Mr. Marsh was my, was my mentor. He came along, he helped out. Um, and it made me feel like, I could achieve my goals and and that I had support, even though, you know, my folks, my parents were very supportive. Um, that was just another layer to kind of push me towards uh, pursuing my interest and my goals and taking things seriously. Um, so I, I got an example for that. Uh, paying it forward. I've got a great example of that lined up and how at that builds community. I have a hypothetical a situation that I'm going to explain. I'm thinking about how um, if one person comes in and, you know, gives, uh, you know, works with a mother and maybe um, watches her children for a day so the mom can, you know, go get groceries and run her errands and not have to, you know, bring the kids along. You know, she got little kids like that kind of makes that that person um, a little bit, you know, a little bit calmer or it eases the burden of their day. And then maybe then they see, oh, you know what, my neighbor next door, you know, they've got they've got a whole bunch of kids. I'm I'm going to, you know, bring some cookies over to their house and just maybe we need to connect with them and build a relationship. And, you know, that can foster. So we can look at how like one thing could lead to another thing you know, build out your idea and your example. Another thing I was thinking about, there was a news story um, about paying it forward at a, um, at a Dairy Queen where for like a day and a half, the person in front paid for the person behind. I think there's some, there's some implications there. I think there's like the idea that, you know, it's all about people coming together and working together, even though like if I'm getting my, my Dairy Queen paid for, but then I'm paying for the guy behind me. It's kind of a wash when it comes to the money, but it's about being part of something, being part of something that's positive, I guess. Um, so I might think through that idea, uh, but definitely the idea of building community when we all work together and it's not about thinking about ourselves, but also, but really thinking about other people, 
I can talk about that. I've got a good example. The next one where it says free up the, someone's time doing the dishes. I've already shared that example. Um, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with that. Now, I have three reasons. I am prepared to write three body paragraphs. That means my essay is going to be five paragraphs long. I need to build my thesis. I already have in green right here. I've already got my, uh, my foundation for my thesis and my topic sentences. I just have to make some adjustments. The first thing I need to do is I've got to add in the word by. That's going to be linking, uh, linking my ideas. Okay, so uh, I'm also going to capitalize because it's the first letter uh, of the first word of the sentence. Small acts of kindness can have an impact on others by... I'm going to copy this and then I'll adjust it because my brainstorm is not my thesis. It's just my ideas by making a person feel cared about. We might even say the person or making someone or making the recipient feel cared about. I'll go through later on when I'm writing my essay and I'll kind of smooth this out. Okay. The next thing I need to make sure that I'm going to add in is a comma. I've got my comma there. They may pay it forward. Okay, so making the person feel cared about. Uh, I think I'm going to go with freeing up the person's time. So we'll put that in next. Freeing up someone's time, making the person feel cared about, freeing up, we'll say his or her. All right, we're going to put another comma in and the word and. And uh, they may pay it forward. Let's, um, let's change that to uh, giving them a chance to pay it forward. Now, what I did is I, um, I edited right there, like in, in real time. Um, if you're just going to copy and paste yours in, that's fine, uh, but make sure you go back and you edit them in, okay? Make sure that you go back and you smooth it out. So like a couple of things to note here, making ends in ing, making the person feel, freeing up his or her time, and giving. See how they all end in ing? All of your verbs have to. Like if you're going to start with making, then freeing and giving also have to end in ing. That's called parallel construction. Uh, it's just what has to happen to be grammatically correct. All right now, I'm going to go and shrink some of this down uh, just so that I can uh, fit everything else on the page. Real quick now, before I move on into my topic sentences for my three body paragraphs, I want to check that I'm still on task. Okay, so I'm going to read my thesis, small acts of kindness. You read yours too. Okay, pause your pause the video. Um, go over to your Duke Ellington if you're working alongside of me, thinking of your ideas. And what you want to do is make sure make sure that your thesis is answering the question, or your thesis is actually addressing what you're being asked to, in this case, explain. Does this explain, does this set you up to explain how a small act of kindness can have an impact on others? Yes, there are three ways that I came up with that have an impact on others. Good. All right, now let's go down to our topic sentences. The first thing that you've got to make sure you do, you absolutely have to make sure that you have on your topic sentences are some transition words. And students, it does not matter if you use the same three transition words in every essay that you write or the same, um, because each essay, really the transitions kind of move the essay along. So in this case, I'm gonna say first for my first reason. I'm gonna say next, <laughs> guess what? For my next reason. And then I'm gonna say finally for my last reason. 
Now you may choose to use others. You could say uh, to begin additionally, finally, you could say, uh, do, but please do not say my first reason, my second reason, my third reason. That's, that's not good. That's not as good as something short and to the point. If you think back to our lesson on keeping it concise and compact, uh, my first reason, my next reason, another reason, um, that, that doesn't really fit with this. It's not the best way. Um, and for this essay, the one that I'm working on, I am going to use first, next, and finally, I've just evaluated those to be the best for this particular essay. Folks, I've written my thesis, right? So now all I have to do, and I've edited along the way, all I have to do is grab each of my reasons. So I'm going to copy the first reason. And that's what my first topic, uh, first topic sentence will be, and my first paragraph will be about. So as you can see here, I've added a period at the end right there after the word about. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab this next one, freeing up his or her time. I'm not going to get, not going to copy the, uh, not going to copy the comma. Instead, I'm going to make sure that I put a period in at the end. And now I'm going to copy the last reason. paste it in and I'm just using control C and control V. Now folks, I have, I'm done with this assignment. The only thing I have left to do is to go back and confirm. Okay, D am I setting my paragraph up for explaining how small acts of kindness could have an impact on others? First, small acts of kindness could have an impact on others. Oh, ah, see, that's why we need to proofread. We forgot to use the word by. So I know right here, I've got to put it in for each of these. All right, now I can proof, okay? Does this set me up to write a paragraph about how a small act of kindness can have an impact on others? First, small acts of kindness can have an impact on others by making the person feel cared about. Yes, that does. Next, small acts of kindness can have an impact on others by freeing up his or her time. Yes, that, that is exactly what we're talking about. That's how you know, make a change in their life some way. Finally, small acts of kindness can have an impact on others by giving the person a chance to pay it forward. Yes, I all three of my topic sentences match my thesis, which addresses the prompt. All right. Now, if you've watched this, if you need to go back and see how I did something, um, folks, the only part, the only thing that you have to generate, the only part is the brainstorm. You only have to come up with your ideas. And really, that's probably the that's probably the the most creative, most fun, you know, part of this whole process before you get into typing the essay and you know, playing around with the words and your vocabulary word choice. Okay. That's it for this. Uh, go ahead and uh, this video will end. Let me just remind you of what you have to do today. Going back in uh, to our modules, you're going to finish the Duke Ellington prompt of the day. After you finish the Duke Ellington prompt of the day, right here, engage, you're gonna finish up writing your essay Please apply this skill, the thing that we just went through. Please apply that skill. And then if you did not do the SOL questions from yesterday, you need to get those done as well. All right, folks, have a great day. I will see you on, uh, if you're in person, uh, you're a hybrid student, uh, that first group A through K last names. I will see you on Monday. Uh, if you are not, um, you're not in that hybrid uh, and you are in my uh, second core class after lunch. I will see you at lunchtime. Um, otherwise, I'll see you on Tuesday. And then I'll see you, uh, the other group of hybrid students, on Thursday. Folks, have a great weekend. Be safe. We'll talk to you later. Bye now.